Chris Taylor, in spite of suffering with a knee injury, starred with a bat for the second time in Bristol, where both Gloucestershire and Middlesex have a chance of securing victory on the final day of this enthralling LV County Championship match. Middlesex's plans at the start of day three would have been to get a big first innings lead, but they lost Toby Rowland-Jones, Neil Dexter and Gareth Berg early, the latter giving Jonathan Batty his fifth catch of the innings and John Lewis his third wicket. And the two combined yet again two overs later to remove John Simpson for five and suddenly Middlesex had gone from 296 for four overnight to 343 for eight and a first innings lead of anything at all looked unlikely. However, with Ollie Rayner still at the crease, Middlesex hadn't given up hope and as the morning cloud lifted, he was able to take his side ahead of Gloucestershire's first innings score of 358. Rayner's already made some useful contributions since joining Middlesex on loan from Sussex and this was to prove to be a very handy knock. The change in the weather had certainly settled things down again. Rayner was given splendid support by Tim Murta as he stuck around for just less than an hour in adding 52 for the ninth wicket. Rayner went to the second 50 of his Middlesex career with an all-run four through the onside. It had been a very good and equally important innings from him as it had seen his side into the lead after all, and any lead would be a decent return after the early morning losses. His 50 had come off only 53 balls as well. Just before lunch, Hamish Marshall broke the stand as Murta turned his gentle medium pace to mid-wicket to go for 13. And just after the break, Lewis trapped Rayner leg before on 54. Lewis finished with figures of 5 for 65, the 34th five-wicket haul of his career, as Middlesex were all out for 406. That gave them a slender lead of 48, which appeared to be an insignificant one, as both Marshall and Ian Cobain put back to ball with some positive intent. Boundaries were flying off the bat as Gloucestershire looked determined to try to get themselves back into a position where they could win this match. The game had ebbed and flowed throughout and now Gloucestershire were looking good as the runs were flowing nicely. However, Marshall was then struck on the thumb by Roland Jones and had to retire for some treatment. It later transpired that he's fractured his thumb and is unlikely to take any further part in this match. That didn't affect Cobain, who looked at the best touch of his short career at Gloucestershire. That deficit was knocked off in double quick time and now Gloucestershire looked to build a good lead themselves. There was set back though as Richard Coftree, who'd replaced Marshall, couldn't get out of the way of a lifter from Corey Collymore with Berg taking a tumbling catch. Then in the next over, Kane Williamson was bang in front to Murta to go for a duck, a disappointing start for Gloucestershire's new overseas signing. With Taylor nursing an injured knee and Marshall out of action, Gloucestershire now needed runs from their captain, Alex Gidman. But he'd scored just 10 when he edged a Jaffa from Murta which left his side on 77 for three, leading by 29. Cobain's was now the key wicket. The former MCC young cricketer brought up the second 50 of his season. It had been a counter-attacking one, coming from just 52 deliveries. The Liverpudlian's maiden first-class half-century had seen his side to an early season victory over Derbyshire, and he was becoming greedy for runs here, as he passed his previous best with a couple of well-struck pull shots. Batty had once again been asked to move up the order with Taylor unable to bat until number seven after his injured knee prevented him from fielding, but the keeper was able to help add 43 for the fourth wicket. Cobain had eased to 72 when Middlesex got him. This time he chose the wrong ball to pull and was solidly leg before to Roland Jones. Then Berg on a ball to jag back sharply to have Batty leg before, even though he may question if the ball had actually done too much. That brought first inning Centurion Taylor to the wicket to join Will Gidman. It was these two who pulled their side out of trouble in the first dig, and they were soon doing it again. They'd come together with their team on 128 for five, leading by just 80, and so every run that they could get was going to be important. Taylor had to bat with a runner because of his swollen knee, but that didn't make much of a difference to the way he batted. He looked in tremendous touch as he'd done so on the first day of this match. He struck the ball very well and often didn't ask his runner to do too much as he just kept on striking the ball to the boundary instead. A single brought him his 68 ball 50 to add to his first innings 117 and he was still there at the close by which time he'd moved on to 60 and dominated a six wicket stand of 90 with Gidman who again supported him well. 
So Gloucestershire, end of the day on 218 for five, effectively six down with Marshall's injury, and that gives them a lead of 170. Early wickets on the final day will give Middlesex renewed hope of recording their fourth win, but a Gloucestershire victory cannot be discounted.